Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favourite books for learning about and practising green witchcraft. <music> So of all the types of video on this channel, the ones that I get asked to do the most are books. What books are good for which subjects? Which do I recommend? Which do I not? So today we're going to be talking all about books for green witchcraft. Now I have a stack of books next to me that go over a bunch of different topics. Some of them are on herbalism and the medicinal and magical uses for herbs. Some of them are on green witchcraft. Others are on green wicker and the more specialist practices within green witchcraft. So the first two books that I have are books that talk solely about the plants themselves, a little bit about their correspondences, how to use them magically and medically. Now I really, really do like these books, but I have to say I do have a favourite, so let's start there. Probably my most recommended herbal book of all time is this one. This is Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. Now I love this book so much, mainly because Scott Cunningham was a magical practitioner in his own right. So he comes to write this book from the mindset of a magical practitioner. Inside there are hundreds and hundreds of listings for different herbs, a little bit about what they are, a little bit of the warnings of how to use them, folk name, gender, planet, element, deities, powers, ritual use, magical use. He really goes in detail over hundreds and I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different magical herbs and it's one of the reasons why this is a go-to book of mine and if I was going to recommend any book for a beginner getting into herbalism that wants to learn a lot of information about lots of different plants, I do generally recommend this book in particular. So alongside all of the correspondences inside and the information, he actually adds a lot of very useful things at the very back of the book. So if I head to the back, he actually goes over the different plants that represent different planetary and cosmic bodies. So we have plants for the moon, for Mercury, for Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. And not only that, but as you go through the back of the book, he also separates the plants down into their different magical properties and the things that you can use them for. So just on this one page, we have herbs for love divination, legal matters, longevity, attraction of love, health maintenance, hex breaking. He really breaks it down into very easy to understand chunks. So if you don't necessarily want to know everything about a certain plant, he does categorise them by planet, by intention, and by lots of other things as well, which makes it really easy at a glance to figure out what kind of herbs and plants you might want to use in that kind of magical practice. And then one of my favourite things he actually does in this book is there is a section called Folk Names Cross Reference, and he actually goes over every plant in the book and the other names that people might use to describe them. There are lots and lots of people that still use the traditional herbal name for these plants. And maybe at a glance, if you're looking at a grimoire or you're talking to family members, you might not know what it is that they're referring to, but Scott actually adds in an entire section so you can figure out what the folk name is versus the actual name that we find in modern society. So it's super easy to cross-reference. And also, if you did want to keep your Book of Shadows more secretive, it allows you to kind of translate the name of the herb into the folk name so you can really differentiate the medicinal practice and also the magical practice. So I really, really love this book. If you do want to find it, you can get it in most places. It's been in print for about the last 30 years, I think. It's been around for a while. But that one is definitely probably my most recommended book if you are interested in learning a lot of information about a lot of different plants. But there are others. There is one that I got more recently, which I do really, really like. This is Folk Magic and Healing, An Unusual History of Everyday Plants. Now, this is a really interesting book. Of all of the aesthetically pleasing books that I own, this is actually probably my favourite because not only is it beautiful, it also contains a lot of good information in there. So much like the Scott Cunningham book, it has an A to Z of different plants talking about their magical properties and some of their medicinal uses. And it does come with little illustrations 
to sort of help you identify which plant is which, but if you do want to figure that out, definitely the Scott Cunningham book has better illustrations in it for plant identification. But I will say, if you're ever uncertain as to the identity of a plant, please don't pick it and use it in your magical or medicinal practices. Please make sure you always 100% know that it's the accurate plant before you start using it, because some plants are very easy to misidentify. So it's really important that you get it right. But I do appreciate that they do have these little illustrations in here, even if they aren't necessarily as well drawn as the uh, Scott Cunningham book. Now at the start of this book, it also talks a little bit about how to prepare herbs, the different trees and their magical properties, and also just a few little tidbits of information about different spells and workings that are done with plants. So it is a really, really useful book, but I will say, if you have to pick just one of these books that talks about plants and their magical properties, I personally would go for Scott Cunningham, mainly because it's my favourite of the two books, but they do both have amazing information in them. So both are really, really good resources. It entirely depends on how you learn. If you learn with large chunks of information, Scott Cunningham might be the way to go. But if you want something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and maybe that's a little less obvious, this is a really, really good book nonetheless. So both are in my recommended list because I do really appreciate both of them. Moving on to green witchcraft. There are a couple of books that I really, really like for this. The first is the Green Witch. Now this is probably one of the most popular books on witchcraft today. I know that it spent a lot of time as an Amazon bestseller and the reason it's in this list is because it is a really good book. Although it isn't my favourite for green witchcraft, it definitely is really, really useful for a lot of you that are starting out on this path. And also, because it's one of the most popular books, it's available almost everywhere. So it's very affordable, it's available on Amazon, you can find it on eBay, but it's also found in a lot of libraries, a lot of bookshops, and a lot of high street stores as well. You can find this book almost everywhere, so it's really good if you don't want to order books to your house in case you get questioned on it. It is something that's very readily available, which makes it really useful for anyone just starting out, or that's still hiding their practice from those around them. I'm just gonna skip through the contents for you guys so that you can kind of get an idea of everything that it covers. Now, it definitely doesn't cover these in any depth, but if you are starting out, it could be a really good option because it covers a lot of information in a little bit of detail. So you kind of get a good range of understanding just to start off with. So it starts off with what is green witchcraft before moving on to embracing your own power, focusing on energy and centering, which I really, really appreciate tools, sacred home spaces, sacred outdoor spaces, being in tune with the earth. It then moves on to attuning yourself with nature, forming that connection, and also connecting with the elements, associating with the seasons, the sabbats, the equinoxes and the solstices. And then it talks about living closely with the earth, connecting to trees and plants, herbs, stones, before moving on to planting plants, which is exceptionally useful, especially if you do want to grow your own herbs, and then how to prepare herbs, how to create different types of magical items, becoming a healer and using them for magical and medicinal properties, and also being a kitchen witch. So it does cover a huge range of magical topics, but it's not a very big book, so be prepared that it might cover a lot, but it's not going to go into much detail on any of the topics. I'd probably describe this book as a three-in-one guide to beginner green witchcraft. It's really, really good if you're just getting started, but if you are more advanced, you might find it's just not detailed enough. The first half of the book really just talks about beginner witchcraft, not necessarily green witchcraft. And because of that, I say if you already know about energy work and tools and moon phases and candle colours, you aren't really going to get much use out of the first half of this book. But if you are a beginner and you've never understood anything about magical practice before, this could be a really good beginner's guide to really help you get started, especially if green witchcraft is your end goal. The other half of the book is a combination of a Scott Cunningham style book. It contains a lot of information about herbs and their different magical uses, but of course it isn't as detailed because, well, they're the same thickness and this goes into lots of different subjects as well. So if you wanted a book that was very detailed about the plants and their different magical properties, 
I would personally recommend buying two different books and getting this one as your guide to different plants and then a second book as your guide for green witchcraft. This is really good as a one-stop shop, but I find that it definitely doesn't go as in-depth as some of you might want, especially if you are more advanced with your magical practice. But all in all, I have to say that of all of the beginner-esque books that I've ever read, this one is probably one of my favourites. I do really, really enjoy it. It covers a lot of information in a really easy to understand way. And because of that, it makes it really, really useful if you are a younger individual getting into witchcraft, if you are sharing green witchcraft with your children, it can be a really good book to read because it is very easy to understand. It's not overly complex, it's not particularly wordy, it is just really full of information but it doesn't contain a huge amount of information. So if you do want something more, I would recommend finding a different book. It's definitely a good springboard if you are new to witchcraft and you really want to delve deeper into it. And if you enjoy this book, at the back there is a bibliography. So you can check out the other works that the author has looked at before creating this book and you might find some absolutely fantastic resources that you wouldn't have found otherwise. And it's actually something that I'll say for all of these books. If you have one of these or you are interested in getting one of these, at the back of the book there is typically a bibliography that shows all of the books that the author has looked at and referenced in the creation of their book. So if there is a particular topic in that work that you want to dive far deeper into, there is likely going to be a resource at the back where you can find the book and then you can look more into it yourself. So you can really expand on the knowledge that you've gained from that one particular author by looking at all of the books that were used in the creation of that one writing. So the next book on green witchcraft is this one. This is The Garden Witch's Herbal. Now it's a battered book. I've had this book for a long time. It is water damaged, it is stained, it is very bent and it doesn't like sitting on bookshelves very much. But I've used this book probably religiously for the past eight years or so. It's a really, really good book. Now I will say that it does contain a little bit of Wicca in there and a lot of you by now will know that most witchcraft books do contain at least a small amount of Wicca unless you're really lucky. Now that isn't inherently a bad thing but I just wanna let you know in case you were after a purely witchcraft book. This does contain a little bit of Wicca, but it is definitely something that you can look past. So just like with the other book, I'll go through the contents list just briefly so you can kind of see all of the topics that this book covers. So it starts off with magical inspiration and garden design, creating magical gardens, elements of design, colour magic within gardens, green witchery in the city, which is really good for any of you urban witches that do want to get into green witchcraft. It then goes over the different elements, culinary herbs, windowsill plants, magical associations. It goes over wildflowers and the different properties behind them, magic in the hedgerows, folklore and magic of different trees, tree spirits and the lessons we can learn from Celtic tree magic, gothic herbs and forbidden plants, so a little bit into gothic folklore and legend, as well as lots of poisonous plants and their magical properties, which I find really interesting. Gardening, herbs and plants of the Sabbaths. It then goes over herbs and the stars, so the different planetary associations of plants, the magical associations of different planets, archangels, zodiac signs, and the mysteries of the earth and sky. Magical herbalism, herbal magic, lunar enchantments thinking outside the window box, different spell worksheets, life lessons that we can learn from mother nature. So it does go into a huge range of different magical topics and I find a lot of them really interesting. The book itself spends a lot of time talking about different magical herbs and their uses as well as how to grow them and they also have these little illustrations in them. Now they are separated in a slightly different way to the Scott Cunningham book. In the Scott Cunningham book they are A to Z, so it's very much more of a A to Z guide, whereas this book goes into them and it separates them based on the type of plant that they are and where you can find them. So the poisonous plants are in one section, the wild flowers are in another, the harvestable plants are in another, the garden plants are in another, and so on and so on. But it does also talk about different topics, so it goes a little bit into hedge witchcraft, if anyone is interested in that. It talks about 
plants that are related to different astrological signs and zodiacs. And there is a section at the back here that goes all of the plants that are associated with the planet Jupiter and some information about it. It does go into a lot of detail about the moon phases and how you can work with them in gardening. It's definitely a really interesting book. This one specializes a lot more in growing your own plants and how to incorporate magic within the growing process. The best times to plant based on the moon phases, the different places to plant items, how you can create magical outdoor spaces based on the color of the plants and the herbs that you're using. It's a very interesting book that is a lot more detailed than Green Witch, but they are very different in their style. So this is very much all about planting magic and gardening magic and the almost active practice of being part of a garden and growing your own magical and medicinal plants. Whereas the Green Witch is very much based on the magical process of the spell work and the ritual using plants. So they're two different ways of working green magic. One is very much active throughout the entire growing process from the setting up and the designing of a garden or a window box all the way up to the magical practice whereas this one is very much focused on the magical practice itself. So they're definitely just two different versions of green witchcraft. They're both really interesting in their own way. I have no real preference with them because they're both very different but I will say that the one I do go back to the most and the one I've had the most use out of is this one versus this one but that's mainly because I myself don't need the beginner information in the first half of this book. So I often use this one because it is a little bit more advanced in its understanding. Now the last two books that I'm going to be talking about are these ones. Now these are slightly more specific in what they talk about, either by religion or by practice. So the first and probably one of my favourite books of all time is this one. This is Celtic Tree Magic, Owen Law and Druid Mysteries. Now I love working with trees. So when I saw this book, I knew I had to get it. I enjoy doing Owen Divination. I really enjoy working with tree spirits. And that is what this book is all about. Now, although it isn't technically green witchcraft, it is an aspect of green witchcraft. It is definitely interesting if you do wanna dive a little bit more into tree magic and the tree aspect of green witchcraft because some people they don't connect to flowers or garden plants they connect to trees and if you are interested I would thoroughly recommend this book it's probably one of my favorite reads of all time so I will go through the contents list for you so you can kind of get an idea of what this book talks about but it does go over almost everything in relation to working and connecting to tree spirits and also working divination with the tree energies which is really really awesome so it starts with an introduction to the path through the trees before moving on to the Oum alphabet, a little bit about its mythological and textural sources. It then goes on to talk about the Nemeton and the sacred grove of antiquity before going into the forest through spirit visions, energy raising, the inner grove and offerings. So it's really useful if you do wanna start learning about connecting with tree spirits and tree energies. It does kind of go in depth about journeying and visions, as well as offerings that you can give back to the trees, which I do really like. It then works through the different trees within the Oum alphabet. Now there are a collection of different trees. It goes through birch, rowan, alder, willow, ash, hawthorn, oak, holly, hazel, apple, blackberry, ivy, broom, blackthorn, elder, scots pine, gauze, heather, aspen, and yew. And then it goes over a lot about Oum spiritual quests, about how to create your own Oum staves and wands, about gathering the wood, charging and blessing them, a lot about Oum divination, how to frame the questions, preparing for them, how to actually read the Oum when you've done a drawing. Tree charms, spells, crafts and potions from different trees within the Celtic tree Oum. And then it finishes it up with the idea of vibrational essences, tinctures, and then a little bit of correspondence lists at the end. Now, I really love this book, mainly because it is so unbelievably detailed. So a lot of books on the market today will touch on lots and lots of different aspects of green witchcraft. So this is a really good example. In this book, it does touch very, very briefly on tree magic, but only for a page or two. This entire book is tree magic, all of it. And because of that, it can go so much more in depth 
that a lot of books simply can't do in the amount of space that they have with pages. So this is a very, very detailed book. And it's one of my favorite resources for the OM. It goes over every single tree that's in the OM alphabet, and it shows you the stave, the other names for it, and then a lot of description and meaning, as well as the lore and legend for every single stave. And it's really interesting to see just how much legend there is within Celtic tree magic. Every tree has its own backstory, its own mythology, its own legend that surrounds it. And it really goes in depth, not only about using trees, but how to connect with them on a spiritual level. And that's something that I find a lot of books don't go into. A lot of books will talk about how to use herbs, what you can get out of them. I have to say that this is probably one of the first books that I've read that doesn't just talk about what you can get out of herbs and trees and all of these plants, but also the connection that you can form with them. And I find it's something that is very much lacking in this modern wave of witchcraft, is that a lot of people believe that crystals, herbs, plants, energies, spirits, they're there to help us, when in reality it's about forming that spiritual connection, that bond between you and the plant, or you and the herb, or you and the spirit, and that connection is what gives the real potency to that working. It's not all take, 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 and this book really does share information about how to give back, about offerings, giving back your time, giving back your energy, really forming that spiritual long-term connection. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I love this book so much because it does have that respect for the plants and the trees that it's talking about. It isn't just a take, take, take. It's a how can I better form a relationship? And this book massively helped me to start forming deeper connections with the trees and the plants and just plants in general and nature around me. It gives you a different perspective on it all. So I really like this. It's definitely not the best book if you are a beginner beginner and you don't know anything because it kind of skips the beginner practice out of it and it kind of just deep dives into tree magic. But if you are interested in tree magic and you already know about energy work and centering and forming connections and that kind of thing, it can be really good to just expand your knowledge. The last book that I have to talk about today is this one. This is Green Witchcraft, Folk Magic, Fairy Lore and Herbcraft. Now the reason that this isn't with the other Green Witchcraft books is the name is a little bit deceptive. It does have a very strong Wiccan influence. So if you are interested in Green Wicca, this is a really, really good book that I would thoroughly recommend. But if you are interested in purely witchcraft, this one might not be for you, but it is still a really good read that I can thoroughly recommend. Since I purchased this book, another two editions have been released. So there is now a Green Witchcraft one, two, and three. Now I can't speak for two and three because I have never read them, but I have heard some really good things about them. So it could be worth looking into the entire series if you are really interested in Green Wicca and Green Wiccan witchcraft, which I would personally describe this book as very much being. So once again, I'm gonna go through the contents list so you can kind of get an idea of what goes into this book. So it starts talking about the green, about the nature that's all around us and how we can connect to it, before going into the basics, witches and herbs, green living, magic, magical practices, green rituals, the espats, the different sabbats, then it goes into an afterword and then different appendixes at the very bottom. So you guys know that I talk a lot about the basics on this channel, about centering, grounding, visualization, energy manipulation, that kind of thing. Now I will say that the basic section in this book does not go into those topics. So although it is described as the basics, it mainly talks about the fundamentals of Wicca. The idea of celebrating Sabbaths, whether you're in a coven or whether you're solitary, a little bit about the significance of Wiccan names, a bit about pagan roots and also the threefold law. It's a lot more about the fundamentals of green wicker than it is about the fundamentals of beginner witchcraft. So if you are interested in purely beginner witchcraft, this book is not gonna teach you the basics. Not that I would personally describe as being the basics, but it is the basics for green wicker if that's what you're interested in. It goes into herbs and their qualities. So it does go over lots and lots of different herbs and their magical properties, but nowhere near as in-depth as Scott Cunningham. It's very much a, uh, a brief guide to different herbs and it definitely doesn't go over them in any great quantity. So you only really get one line for each herb rather than an individual page. 
but a lot of people aren't necessarily reading this book for the herb encyclopedia so instead you do have a lot of information about the history of green witchcraft about family connections about the symbols for divination and candle magic different teas and magical recipes it goes over tarot uh, herbal baths money rituals rites of passage, coming of age, using herbs within your Wiccan spirituality. It's very much about your Wiccan spirituality and working with herbs in your Wiccan day-to-day -day life as a, an integrated part of your day-to-day -day life rather than a separate entity. So it is very much Wicca orientated, but if that is what you're after, it is a fantastic book series on Green Wicca. But if you're going into it, do expect it to be on Green Wicca. The title is very, very deceptive. I got this book thinking that it was on green witchcraft when it is very, very deeply connected to Wicca. So although this book isn't on green witchcraft, it is exceptionally useful if you are a Wiccan and you want to incorporate green witchcraft into your Wiccan religion. If you want to transform yourself into a green Wiccan, this one is definitely a fantastic series that I will definitely recommend for Wicca, not necessarily for secular witchcraft. So I will say that this is a little bit more on the beginner green witch wicker side, a lot like the green witches, but this goes a lot more in depth and there are two newer versions of the book. So with the three of them, I'd say you're gonna get a much deeper understanding than you will from just one book. But if you aren't so much interested in the wicker aspect, then you might be better off with one of the other books that I've spoken about today. So those are all the books that I have for you today. I hope that it was useful for you guys. I know that there are a lot more books on the market about green witchcraft, but these are the ones that I've read that I found to be particularly useful in certain aspects of green witchcraft, whether they are lists, green wicca, beginner green witchcraft, or more specific green witchcraft. I tried to get a good variety for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. If you have any other videos on witchcraft books that you would like me to do, feel free to put it down in the comment section. I would absolutely love to know. If you do want to chat with other members of the community, we do have a Discord server. The link is down in the description box and there is a section all about witchcraft books. So if you do want to talk more about the books that you enjoy within Green Witchcraft, feel free to check out the Discord server. The link is down below. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to post a comment. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best to his magical content every single week. So I hope that you guys are staying safe. A massive shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys will have your names on the next screen. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.